Fanatical cultists madly rush towards the sinner on the ground, surrounding him. In the next moment, three hellish messengers descended. They immediately burned the cultists to a crisp. Three years later, season two of Hellbound has finally premiered. In the previous season, the actor who played the main character, Zhang Jin Su, was put in a black box for breaking the law. Therefore, in this season, the lead role of Zhang Jin Su has been recast. Let's briefly recap the previous season's plot. A divine punishment announcement suddenly appeared in downtown Seoul. The hell messengers from another realm would declare the exact time of the victim's deaths. Then, at that time, they would send people to hell. These perplexing supernatural events caused great chaos in society. The leader of the cult organization, New Truth Zhang Jin Su, issued a stern warning about it. He claimed that only the guilty would be sentenced. An even more extreme organization, Arrowhead, also began to harm the sinners and their families. However, Zhang Jin Su himself had seen his own death prophecy 20 years ago, yet he had never committed any crimes. This also proved that divine punishment was just a pretext. Not all who were punished were guilty, but Zhang Jin Su was quite satisfied. He built everything because everyone feared being punished, so they dared not commit crimes. Isn't this a dreamlike world? A few minutes later, his time of death was approaching. If news of Jin Su's death by hellish messengers got out, everything he built would collapse. So Jin Su gave Officer Chen two choices. First, to expose his death by hellish messengers, overturning everything about new truth. But his daughter, Xiao He, would go to prison for murder. Second, to conceal his death. And then he could enjoy the world he created with his daughter. In the end, Officer Chen chose to conceal the truth to protect his daughter. But soon, the hellish messengers executed a newborn. The new truth's theory of guilty sinners was thus questioned and challenged. The story of the second season unfolds from here. At this point, Jin Su gradually awakened from the dream. He found himself lying in a woman's bed. Jin Su walked outside in confusion. In the square, he saw his younger self. 20 years ago, he had been abandoned by his mother. In this very place, just as Jin Su was feeling puzzled, his mother suddenly ran over. His mother urged him to hide quickly, so he wouldn't be discovered by Jin Su. When Zhang Jin Su heard this, he exclaimed, What are you talking about? Am I not your son, Jin Su? As soon as he finished speaking, he saw a stranger's face in the mirror. Just then, the hellish messengers rushed in. Jin Su was thrown back to 20 years ago, in a rundown little home. This time, the reflection in the mirror showed him as his father. After two consecutive illusions, Jin Su realized that the first strange man in the mirror was his mother's lover. She had endured enough abuse from her husband, which is why she left her son behind with her lover. Jin Su felt dizzy. He was thrown onto the incinerator platform again by the hell's messenger. He became the murderer of Xiao He's mother. He was pushed into the furnace by the girl and burned to death. After three transformations and three agonies, Jin Su finally resurrected in his own identity. He transformed from a pile of ashes back into a living being with blood and flesh. He also encountered a stranger in the woods. <laughs> the scene shifted. An arrowhead was live streaming. A month ago, the sinner Mr. Zhang received a death notice from the hellish messengers. His time of death was in 20 minutes. At this moment, the heavily made up leader questioned Mr. Zhang about what crime he had committed. <laughs> Mr. Zhang wanted to absolve himself of guilt, so he proactively sought Arrowhead for baptism before the hellish messengers arrived. The flamboyant leader was skilled at inciting chaos, constantly stirring the emotions of the crowd, claiming that new truth used divine will as an excuse. Unlike us at Arrowhead, who can truly help sinners cleanse their sins, that's why Mr. Zhang came to seek our support. The leader said this, without fear of biting her own tongue. If your arrowhead don't use the divine oracle as an excuse, then why are you live streaming online and even inviting cultural commentators to stabilize the situation? So how does arrowhead help people cleanse their sins? Do you remember in the last season when God punished the innocent infant? It was thanks to the parent's sacrifice that the child was saved. Arrowhead believes this was not God punishing the wrong person, but that he intended to use the child to punish the guilty parents. Fortunately, the couple, in their final moments, voluntarily accepted the purifying fire and went to hell, which saved their child. The leader rolled up her sleeves, revealing her burned arms, claiming this was the evidence left 
when Sinner Kim was consumed by the flames, when she rushed into the fire to help him. This time, when Mr. Jong faced divine punishment, the leader would again rush in to protect him. Arrowhead believed that, as long as they were like that couple, rushing into the flames to help Mr. Jong bear the divine punishment, they could cleanse his sins and obtain forgiveness. No sooner had the words been spoken, than the earth began to tremble. Three hellish messengers approached, engulfed in dark mist. The worshippers on sight were thrown into complete panic. Mr. Jong was terrified at the last moment. He did not want to be burned to death. He desperately hoped to make a final struggle. The countdown was nearing its end. The leader shouted, commanding everyone to rush forward. They surrounded Mr. Jong with their bodies. The hellish messengers paid no attention to these fools. He directly burned the sacrificing worshippers to death. Nearly a hundred people turned to ashes on the spot. They failed to save Mr. Jong. The commentators in the live stream were stunned, yet the host appeared moved. Look at us at Arrowhead. Though we didn't succeed in helping Mr. Jong cleanse his sins, we have a noble spirit of sacrifice. We will use our lives to help every seeker of aid. Now look at new truth. Since Chairman Jong Jin Su left clues from God, he has been missing for eight years. The current Chairman Kim only uses hypocritical doctrines for personal gain. Now, new truth has fallen into decline. Chairman Kim's speeches can't even sell out 400 seats. Not to mention that, on his way to the auditorium, he was ambushed by Arrowhead. Chairman Kim was forced to get out and flee. Arrowhead followers knocked him down and used a rope to trap Chairman Kim's neck. They then drove him around the street in humiliation. If it weren't for his subordinates crashing in to stop it, Chairman Kim would have probably died there. He would have met a fate of beheading. Chairman Kim fled to the auditorium and learned that Chief Secretary Lee Su had arrived. However, the current South Korean government is essentially powerless. Religion is the real controller, compared to the dogmatic arrowhead, which disregards the law. The president prefers to cooperate with new truth. So Lee Su came to help Chairman Kim. In fact, Arrowhead's theories are quite similar to those of New Truth, but they have people willing to sacrifice themselves in the flames, which is why they attract more support, and New Truth lacks a representative figure. After saying this, Lee Su took out a tablet that showed a video from the first season of The Single Mother, Park Jong Su, who was executed and resurrected. Lee Su knew that, after her resurrection, she had been hidden by Chairman Kim. Poor Jong Su had been locked away for four years. Her mental state still hadn't recovered, but the miracle of resurrection was enough to make her a greater asset than Arrowhead. Hearing this, Chairman Kim also had to ask, what if others also resurrected? Wouldn't this scheme become ineffective? Lee Su countered that, not everyone could resurrect to become a symbol. Only those like the single mother Jong Su, or the infants saved by their parents, could become symbols. Currently, the government has yet to find that infant. They only have Jong Su as leverage. Chairman Kim said there was also Jong Jin Su. Only he and Officer Chen knew in the world that this leader of New Truth had also been executed. If he also resurrected, this would definitely cause chaos. However, Officer Chen had already gone missing. No one knew the location of Jin Su's death. Upon hearing this, Lee Su immediately began to investigate. Meanwhile, Officer Chen was living in hiding taking care of his ailing daughter. As Xiao He's condition worsened, the doctor recommended immediate hospitalization. While Officer Chen called in to take leave, he passed by a black car and got on the bus. Soon, he realized the black car was following him. As a former detective, he quickly got off and entered a roadside market. He used the crowd to shake off his pursuers. After he finally made it home, he saw members of New Truth surrounding the entrance. Xiao He had already been dragged into a car by them. Despite Officer Chen's desperate struggles, he couldn't fight off so many people. As he was about to be forced into the car, the black car reappeared. Right after, lawyer men from the organization Sutu appeared. Sutu was an organization dedicated to anti-cult efforts and protecting the families of victims. Lawyer men and his team easily fought off the cultists. They successfully rescued Officer Chen, but the cultists seized the opportunity to drive away with Xiao He. Lawyer Min quickly got in the car to pursue them. Truly, she was the strongest fighter in the show. Soon, she closed in on the cult's car via a back road. Then she ripped off a side mirror and wedged it into the accelerator. Lawyer Min smashed through the glass and dove into the enemy vehicle. She effortlessly took down several cultists. Lawyer Min picked up Xiao He and jumped out of the car to escape. She let the out-of-control car crash into a barrier. The Sutu members took Officer Chen and his daughter away. The members of New Truth 
returned to report to Chairman Kim. Chairman Kim was perplexed by this news. He couldn't understand how Su Tu could know his plans for the day. Could there be a mole within the cult or the government? Upon hearing this, after Officer Chen was taken away by Su Tu, Li Su didn't have much reaction. As long as Arrowhead didn't get there first, it's fine. After all, Su Tu would only take him away and hide him, just like that infant from before. Not to mention, if Zhang Jinsu truly resurrected and decided to show himself, he would definitely come looking for new truth. However, since Su Tu is well informed, they might also know about Zhang Su. So Li Su planned to publicly announce her resurrection tonight to prevent others from seizing the narrative and causing trouble. As for the new religious doctrine, it will be directly written by the government. The facts were just as Li Su had anticipated. Lawyer Min indeed learned about the resurrection of Park Zhang Su through spies placed within New Truth. She also knew the government planned to promote her to spread the new doctrine. However, there was a hidden risk in that plan, whether Zhang Jin Su had resurrected. Thus, Lawyer Min sought Officer Chen to inquire about the location of Jin Su's death. In the end, Officer Chen truthfully told Lawyer Min that Jin Su died in the orphanage during his childhood. However, Officer Chen did not want his daughter to know about it. Because Xiao he regarded Jin Su as a deity, and she only had three months left to live. She couldn't endure any more blows. Officer Chen and his daughter were taken to a safe zone by Su Tu members. Xiao He had not yet recovered. She insisted on having a phone. Xiao He was dissatisfied with the current chairman Kim. She believed he wanted to erase everything about Zhang Jin Su, so she vowed to defend her idol at all costs. Officer Chen could only support his daughter's faith so that her belief in survival would not collapse. On the other side, lawyer Min drove to the Sydney Youth Hostel. Their secret base was hidden here. The rescued infant, A Hyun, had reached the age to start kindergarten for the past five years. Su Tu had been closely observing her, but had found no special qualities in the child. Meanwhile, the live stream from New Truth began. They publicly announced the news of Zhang Su's resurrection and claimed that New Truth and the other side, after intense and in-depth discussions, they confirmed that God wished to convey his message through MS. Park Jong Su, three months later, resurrected Park Jong Su, would personally reveal God's will to everyone to rectify the oracle tainted by treachery. New Truth named it the new mandate. The members of Su Tu watched the live stream as well and joked that we need to find a resurrected person too. Just then, a hacker suddenly noticed A Hyun had woken up. She pulled something out from her clothes. Everyone immediately became alert. They quickly unlocked the password lock and entered A Hyun's room. They interrogated her about what she had hidden, but it was just a toy the girl picked up while wandering in a restricted area. Although Su Tu claimed to be protecting A Hyun, the situation was far from normal. A Hyun couldn't go out freely. She was monitored 24 hours a day. She had to undergo monthly DNA tests, blood tests, and psychological evaluations. Su Tu couldn't keep her under house arrest forever. Perhaps A Hyun was just an ordinary child. Meanwhile, Su Tu's subordinates set up equipment in the orphanage. As long as Zhang Jin Su resurrected, they would be able to know immediately. One person volunteered to stay and watch over the equipment. He was the one who first witnessed Jin Su's resurrection. His name was Chion Se Hyung, and his wife, Ji Won, was lost to the ideas spread by Jin Su. At that time, New Truth was at its peak, and Ji Won was brainwashed by Zhang Jin Su's ideology. She even went to witness the scene of Park Zhang Su's death. Ji Won believed she had witnessed a miracle firsthand. After Zhang Jin Su disappeared, Ji Won was deeply frustrated. She was so distraught that she could barely eat or drink. Later, by chance, she saw Arrowhead's live stream. Ji Won suddenly realized that being a bystander was also a sin. So she joined Arrowhead as a sacrificer. Ji Won Se Hyung had tried to persuade his wife, but a brainwashed person is as stubborn as a rock. No matter what you said to her, it was useless. Thus, Ji Won became a leader and Arrowhead's most fervent and selfless follower. Ji Won Se Hyung watched as his wife rushed into the sight of divine punishment, madly protecting the sinners. It was as if she had forgotten fear forgotten herself. In the face of the hellish messengers, she did not flinch at all. She 
Chiyon Sehyung rushed forward and hugged his wife. At that moment, the punishment of the Hell Messenger has begun. The followers of Arrowhead rushed into the flames one after another, being burned to charcoal one by one. Jiwon saw the scene but felt no fear. She even stabbed her husband and leaped into the inferno. But she arrived too late. The hellish messengers had just retreated, so Jiwon only burned half of her arm. <laughs> Chion Sehyun looked at the woman before him, and he deeply realized that she had gone mad. We all know the story that followed. Jiwon once again threw herself into the flames, but this time, she was not so lucky. So Chion Sehyun now voluntarily stayed at the orphanage. He had been there for three months. Chion Sehyun lived up to expectations. He discovered that Zhang Jin Su had resurrected. He immediately drove to the scene and sent a text message to notify Su Tu. Then the scene from the beginning of the second season unfolded. Chion Sehyung disguised himself as a follower to gain their trust. Meanwhile, Zhang Jin Su, after several identity shifts, was temporarily plagued by nightmares. Zhang Jin Su always checked through mirrors to confirm he hadn't turned into someone else. But every time he looked into the mirror, he would see the figure of the hellish messenger. Jin Su took some time to calm down. He borrowed a computer from Chion Sehyung to quickly search online for news related to new truth. Jin Su saw news about a newborn escaping divine punishment and the resurrection of Park Jong Su. On the other side, Chion Sehyun quietly contacted the Su Tu organization. They instructed him to bring Jin Su to a designated location. But this Chion Sehyun was a bit slow witted. He forgot that there were surveillance cameras in the orphanage's computer. Zhang Jin Su immediately sensed that something was off. He seized Chion Sehyun, who intended to ambush him. Fortunately, he had just resurrected and his body was not fully acclimated yet. In the end, Jin Su couldn't overpower Chion Sehyun. He was injected with a dose of anesthetic. Su Tu was holding an emergency meeting. They planned to transfer Jin Su to a safe house to isolate him from the outside world and investigate what he experienced after his death. They wanted to know whether the so-called hell truly exists. Although lawyer Min did not agree, she couldn't think of a better solution. She had no choice but to propose to rescue Jong Su from New Truth. If they didn't quickly stop Chairman Kim, South Korea would become a theocracy. However, the other leaders of Su Tu were unwilling to take that risk. But all the key figures, such as Jong Su's two children and Ae Hyun, were in Lawyer Min's hands. So the others had to make concessions. They agreed to discuss further the plan to rescue Jong Su. At the same time, Chairman Kim's schemes were not going smoothly. After all, Jong Su was acting like a madwoman now. Getting her to cooperate was no simple task. The only thing Jong Su cared about was her two children. Although the children were hidden by Su Tu, Chairman Kim quickly found a breakthrough. He told Jong Su that the children surely missed her. Now that the news of her resurrection had been released, even if lawyer Min was blocking the children, they would come running to find their mother. Jong Su was indeed swayed by his words. However, she didn't want her children to be involved. Jong Su only asked Chairman Kim not to disturb their lives. The scene shifted. Jin Su woke from his coma. He realized he was tied up. Chion Sehyung had left his mouth unsealed. He wanted to question Jin Su about how he felt about how the world had become what it was now. Was this what he wanted to see before he died? But Jin Su, as a master of brainwashing, had a set of internally consistent beliefs. He believed Ji Won was happy when she died because everything was in accordance with God's will, which brought a sense of fulfillment and connection and the peace that followed. This was a joy that ordinary life could not provide. Chion Sehyung got out of the car and punched him in anger. But Jin Su had died once already. Would he really fear such trivial violence? Chion Sehyung simply felt that Su Tu could create a brand new world to prevent the tragedy that befell his wife from happening again. Jin Su laughed at this. Brother, you're truly adorably naive. So many years have passed. What achievements has Su Tu made with that newborn who escaped divine punishment? Those people are intoxicated by their self-righteousness in guarding justice. They claim to seek the truth. But he is the one who has died once. Only he knows the truth. And that truth is not what Su Tu wants. Jin Su began to brainwash again. He claimed that as long as they handed him over to Su Tu, they would surely kill him. Perhaps that baby had already died. 
After all, apart from Su Tu, no one had ever seen her. 당신 아내 같은 희생자가 나오지 않는 세상을 만들고 싶다고 그거 할수 있는 사람 나밖에 없어. She on Se Hyung taped Jin Su's mouth shut, but it was clear that his thoughts had already begun to waver. Soon after, Chi On Se Hyung met with the Su Tu members. They immediately transferred him away. Chi On Se Hyung quickly chased after them and asked how they planned to handle Jong Jin Su. As expected, he received the same old answer: lock him up for research until the truth is uncovered. Clearly, the Su Tu members did not want to say much to Chi On Se Hyung. They quickly drove away, but Chi On Se Hyung fell into deep thought. He repeatedly recalled what Jin Su had just said. His wife's tragic situation replayed in his mind. Finally, he slammed the steering wheel. Chi On Se Hyung chased after the Su Tu car and crashed into it. He jumped out of the car with a stun baton to save the person. Jin Su also jumped out of the car to help. In the end, the two worked together to subdue the bodyguards. Chi On Se Hyung took Jin Su and left the scene. The latter was preparing to find the leader of Arrowhead. He intended to use those madmen to achieve his goals. Meanwhile, New Truth was holding a meeting. They were preparing to draft the new mandate that Jong Su would announce during the live stream. Lee Su understood the principles of how cults deceive people. She only made a few simple requests. The content needed to be concise and powerful. At first glance, people would find it reasonable, but upon deeper thought, they would feel confused and perplexed. After all, so-called famous quotes are often ambiguous phrases, yet they seem reasonable in any context. Apart from the ghostwriting team, Lee Su even prepared stylists for Jong Su. From clothing to jewelry to makeup, every detail had to be perfect. However, after browsing through Jong Su's interview records, she discovered something interesting. Two years ago, Jong Su mentioned the name Lee Yumi during an interview with Vice Chairman Lee Sangil. She also mentioned some nonsensical phrases like Mercedes cars and silk pillows. Lee Sangil passed away six months ago due to a cerebral hemorrhage. Lee Su's team investigated and found out that the person who performed CPR on him was named Lee Yumi. Lee Su realized that what Jong Su said might not be nonsense. Perhaps she could see the moment of a person's death to confirm whether this hypothesis was true. Lee Su instructed Chairman Kim to investigate every person who had interviewed Park Jong Su to see if they were still alive and if they were dead, in what manner they had died. In addition to this, she had another question to ask. 네 아무리 뒤져봐도 김정철 의장님 면담 기록은 없던데. Chairman Kim was lost in thought and didn't hear Lee Su's question, but seeing his dazed expression, he might have heard something from Jong Su. Sure enough, as soon as Lee Su left, Chairman Kim went to find Jong Su to ask her questions. He asked Jong Su if she remembered what they discussed during their interview. 봉황 같은 새 화려하고 아름다운 풍경. Jong Su was unclear about the meaning of these visions. She only saw Chairman Kim and had corresponding hallucinations. However, Jong Su was certain that it was a stunning and magnificent scene. It gave no sense of foreboding. The scene shifted. Jin Su and Chi On Se Hyung were resting in a hotel. Chi On Se Hyung contacted Arrowhead using his wife's account. Next, they just had to wait for their reply. However, Chi On Se Hyung did not reveal to Arrowhead that Jin Su had died once due to divine punishment. After all, only a few people were aware of this. He also bought Jin Su a pair of sunglasses to prevent him from seeing his reflection and losing control again. Just then, Arrowhead finally sent the address. Chi On Se Hyung immediately took Jin Su to the car before departing. He couldn't help but ask, "Isn't New Truth a better option? Why does he want to find Arrowhead?" Jin Su's answer was very simple: because New Truth and Su Tu have no real faith. They just want to exploit these anomalies to satisfy their own desires. And the reason the world is collapsing is all due to fanatical beliefs. Therefore, Jong Jin Su wants to correct these mistakes. He must first deal with fanatics like Arrowhead. On the other side, lawyer men learned about Jin Su's escape, and Su Tu's leaders were completely panicked. They did not know Chi On Se Hyung's thoughts. They could only reassure themselves that he likely wanted to take personal revenge on his enemies. He wouldn't hand anyone over to Arrowhead or New Truth. Little did they know, the two had already arrived at Arrowhead's territory. A motorcycle led them to meet the boss paper windmill. Along the way, Jin Su saw his own portrait. They entered an abandoned nightclub. It turned out that Paper Windmill was the live stream host. He originally had an arrogant demeanor, but when he saw Jin Su take off his sunglasses, he immediately led his subordinates to kneel. 
and pay their respects. Paper windmill subordinates first sent Chion Sehyun away. He arranged for the boss to have a private conversation with Jin Su. Chion Sehyun and the others were locked in a room. The reason Paper Windmill had this code name was because a windmill has no self awareness, it acts entirely according to the will of the wind. And this was the philosophy left by Jin Su. Now that he could meet the real person, he was certainly excited. However, Jin Su proposed to keep his return a secret for now. He wanted to avoid the government and new truth, and secretly meet John Su to expose that. New truth was imposing false truths on Park John Su, then reveal the true truth. Zhang Jin Su knew best how to win people's hearts. He told Paper Windmill that when the time came, he would also stand beside him. After all, you have always represented me in guarding the divine will. Paper Windmill felt delighted. He vowed to risk everything to take Jin Su to see Zhang Su. After saying this, Paper Windmill suddenly asked, What should we do about the leader's husband? Hearing this, Jin Su went to see Chion Sehyun alone. He confessed that he had lied. He was no longer interested in changing the world because those monsters kept chasing him. In the mirror, Jin Su only wanted to find the resurrected Park Jong Su. He wanted to ask how long this situation would last and whether there was an end to it. Chion Sehyun was devastated by the truth, but Jin Su delivered the final blow without mercy. <laughs> Whether it was his wife's life or revenge, Chion Sehyun entrusted it all to others. He even left the final decision to Jin Su. Such a person was destined to fail. Chion Sehyun was stabbed to death by Arrowhead. At the same time, due to Jin Su's disappearance, the leaders of Su Tu lost their motivation. They were unwilling to participate in the plan to rescue Zhang Su. Only Dennis from headquarters was prepared to help lawyer Min. He promised to devise a detailed rescue plan. Soon after, the conference to announce the new mandate was convened. Lawyer Min and Dennis also got into the car and set off. Dennis specifically brought a gun, but Lawyer Min removed most of the bullets. She left only one bullet for deterrence because she was not a terrorist. She would not act with contempt for the law and kill indiscriminately. As night fell, zealous followers waved flags and shouted. The large square was thrown into chaos. Arrowhead had placed people around, so they smoothly infiltrated the venue. Paper Windmill stated, Our families are ready. They are outside, pretending to support new truth. Just give us the signal, and we will act immediately. At this moment, Lawyer Min also arrived at the square. She asked Dennis where the others were. What plan did he actually devise? Dennis approached an elderly couple. The woman appeared to be a traditional believer. She took Lawyer Min's hand and said, You must let Ms. Park Jong Su meet her children. She disappeared into the crowd. Lawyer Min felt confused. She always felt that Dennis's plan was off. On the other side, after Paper Windmill received Jin Su's permission, he quickly turned on the camera to live stream. He was ready to expose the lies of New Truth. Meanwhile, Zhang Su took the stage surrounded by Chairman Kim. She looked at the frenzied crowd below her. Zhang Su began to have a stress response. She stood on stage, unable to speak, taking advantage of the situation. Paper Windmill led his people to act backstage. Dennis blended into the crowd, watching the countdown on his phone. It turned out that the woman earlier had received a death notice. When the countdown ended, three hellish messengers appeared because the target was mixed in the crowd. The messengers searched everywhere for him causing chaos. Dennis saw the timing was right and led his team into action. Lawyer Min was dissatisfied. He dragged the victims into this. But at this point, rescuing Park Jong Su was the most important thing. It seems that Dennis indeed has some skills. However, few people know that he once collaborated with Lee Su. They were both part of the same campaign team. And this plan was arranged by Lee Su. She wanted to use New Truth to strike at Arrowhead. But Lee Su did not want to allow the power of new truth to grow. After all, Lee Su served the government. So as long as Su Tu took Zhang Su away, new truth could possess the mandate she spoke of. And Su Tu having Zhang Su would create a balance between the two forces, preventing anyone from holding all the power of discourse. It's important to understand that human beings are bound to have a desire to oppose it. As soon as one thought becomes mainstream, 
If the government cannot control that desire, even if one arrowhead is eliminated, many more arrowheads will emerge. Only through the constant clash of opposing ideologies can people maintain a certain degree of autonomy. This is the only way for the country to temporarily maintain balance. Why doesn't the government just take John Su away and declare that divine punishment is nonsense? It's because the public already deeply believes in religious ideologies. If the government intervenes to take away this belief, they will become the enemy of the people. Dennis also has a wife and children to protect, so he chooses to believe in the order and system that Lee Su speaks of. That's why this plan was created. At this critical moment, Arrowhead did not forget to pounce on the sinner. In an attempt to cleanse her sins, the hellish messengers do this daily, taking away a bunch of people at once. He was indeed quite tired of it. Lee Su observed the entire venue coldly. She directed her team to quickly draft the news, but since the stage had already been set, how could Jean Su not make an appearance? Paper Windmill commanded to send Arrowhead's people to the main hall. At the same time, Dennis brought Lawyer Min and Uncle Zhang, who was to be executed in an hour, to the empty basement. Dennis stated that they had to get Zhang Su to the A18 area of the outdoor parking lot. On the first floor within 56 minutes, there was a black car waiting to pick them up. At that time, Uncle Zhang would take them out. Uncle Zhang had already changed into New Truth's uniform. Lawyer Min couldn't help but question Dennis how he could again use someone who had received a death notice. After Uncle Zhang spoke, he left the parking lot to take action. The remaining two needed to wait for news from their informant to find out Zhang Su's location. The informant, Li Su, was directing Chairman Kim to take Park Zhang Su to the third floor of Building B. Then she sent the location to Dennis. Paper Windmill had no time to consider Zhang Su. He brought Jin Su to the first floor of Building A, where the opponent's statue was erected, the perfect place to announce his return. Sure enough, as soon as Jin Su appeared on camera, the barrage of comments instantly multiplied. Almost everyone stopped what they were doing to watch the live stream. Jin Su exposed New Truth for attempting to use the resurrected to convey false doctrines to prevent this from happening. He would personally speak with Zhang Su. Then Jin Su conveyed to everyone the new and true divine revelations. It should be noted here that the public was unaware that Jin Su had died. They always thought he had been in seclusion for eight years. So the only publicly resurrected one is Zhang Su. The Arrowhead followers learned that Jin Su was to meet Park Zhang Su. They all mobilized to help their boss find her. Unexpectedly, they had not found Zhang Su yet, but they encountered Lawyer Min and Dennis. Arrowhead surrounded them, and a battle was about to erupt. The place was littered with the corpses of those executed by divine punishment. Their fight knocked over the corpses. Due to the overwhelming number of enemies, Dennis was accidentally injured. Fortunately, he had the strongest fighter, Lawyer Min, by his side. She took off her hat and charged forward. Lawyer Min first took down the front few followers. Immediately after, Lawyer Min fired her gun, threatening everyone to stop. Taking the opportunity, she retreated with Dennis. At the same time, Uncle Zhang disguised himself as a cleaner to sneak out. He was just caught by Arrowhead members. They reported to their superiors for instructions on how to handle him. The person in charge learned that the cleaner was an old man and wanted to let him go. Jin Su immediately stopped them upon hearing this. He ordered them to search Uncle Zhang. They complied with his orders. The subordinates found a countdown phone. Jin Su immediately understood that. Su Tu was using the sinner to seize Park Zhang Su. He ordered his men to bring Uncle Zhang over. Uncle Zhang struggled upon hearing this, but he was soon overpowered by Arrowhead followers. Meanwhile, another team found Zhang Su's location. After Jin Su learned this news, he rushed to the scene. But when Zhang Su saw the followers, she was so frightened that she broke free from Chairman Kim and ran away. Dressed in green, she looked particularly festive. Fortunately, Zhang Su held on until Lawyer Min arrived. However, the Arrowhead members were getting closer. Lawyer Min did not engage with them. She immediately took Zhang Su and fled. Li Su hung up Chairman Kim's desperate call for help. After all, Su Tu had already taken Zhang Su away. According to her plan, Chairman Kim had little influence within New Truth. He was just a pawn, only able to be dealt with by Arrowhead. However, Jin Su was too busy looking for Zhang Su to care about Chairman Kim at all. This guy was just causing trouble. Chairman Kim had not yet realized that no one would believe him, no matter what he said. Jin Su turned and left, leaving him to the frenzied followers. 
At the moment of his demise, Chairman Kim saw the phoenix on the ceiling of the hall. It turned out that Jiang Su could really see the moment before a person dies. At this moment, Lawyer Min brought Jiang Su to safety, but she saw a death warning on Lawyer Min. <laughs> to prevent Lawyer Min from escaping, he deliberately had paper windmill expose Uncle Zhang in front of the camera and publicly reveal his sinner identity to the viewers. It was revealed that after 25 minutes, this person would create chaos through death. To help Su Tu's accomplices kidnap the resurrected, the previous divine punishment incident in the square was also deliberately orchestrated by Su Tu's organization. Paper Windmill spoke passionately about this. Meanwhile, Jin Su picked up Chairman Kim's phone and looked at Lee Su's number. Jin Su guessed that this woman was the mastermind behind it all, so he took the initiative to send her a text. Seeing that her plan had been exposed, she called him directly. Smart people communicate easily. Jin Su knew that. Lee Su wanted to use new truth in Su Tu to gain complete control over society. He stated that he would not interfere with her ideas. He just wanted to have a chat with Park Jong Su. After all, in the whole world, only their experiences were the same. As a gesture of goodwill, he would help the government deal with Arrowhead. Of course, if they refused to cooperate, he could also turn Arrowhead into a sharp weapon. At this moment, Paper Windmill was about to livestream the process of Uncle Zhang's death. Dennis thought that they could take Zhang Su to the underground garage to escape while everyone was watching the livestream. However, Paper Windmill suddenly exposed Uncle Zhang's family information. Dennis reassured lawyer Min not to worry saying they had already sent people to protect Uncle Zhang's family. As the countdown ended, the hellish messengers crawled out of the ground. Like phantoms, Lawyer Min and the others took the opportunity to retreat, while Uncle Zhang was being punished. Just as Dennis was about to open the car door, Arrowhead followers swarmed in. They captured Dennis and the others on the spot. Working with bad people was always a dangerous decision. In the end, Lee Su chose to collaborate with Jin Su. Now the truth was right before Jin Su's eyes. He ordered his men to release Zhang Su. She immediately ran away. Jin Su chased after her and caught her. He asked Zhang Su if she could see the monsters in the mirror, whether she was also in hell. Having gone through countless worlds, being torn apart by monsters over and over again, until her identity was completely confused. <laughs> Jiang Su had not experienced an identity crisis, she always remembered who she was, and she was not being chased by the monsters in the mirror. At this moment, Jiang Su suddenly realized, she directly stated the truth. Those monsters are not chasing you from behind, but are inside you, because you are a coward. That's why you were chosen by them. Jin Su was furious, he refused to accept reality. Jin Su pulled Jiang Su in front of the garage mirror. He pointed at the monsters inside and shouted, they are right behind me. In the next moment, the monster disappeared. Jin Su hadn't even had time to feel happy. When he suddenly felt excruciating pain in his body, his throat emitted a rough, wheezing sound like a broken accordion. Jin Su sensed that the monster was about to burst forth from his body. He was thrown away by an inexplicable force, and one of his hands transformed into a monstrous form. Paper Windmill wanted to come over to comfort him, but that monstrous hand went completely out of control. It swung Jin Su around wildly and he charged straight into the crowd behind him. Dennis seized the chaos to break free and grab a handgun. He hurriedly opened the car door and got in. Lawyer Min also rushed toward Jiang Su. Dennis drove over to pick up the two. Jin Su grabbed Jiang Su by the ankle. He tried to drag her away. Fortunately, Lawyer Min stepped forward to hold her back. Dennis fired several shots at Jin Su, saving Lawyer Min and Jiang Su. The three of them got in the car and prepared to leave. Unexpectedly, the increasingly monstrous Jin Su clung to the car and wouldn't let go. <laughs> At the last moment, Lawyer Min softened her heart. She used a seatbelt to tie Jin Su's wrist. Immediately after, Lawyer Min accelerated forward, trying to pull the monster off of Jin Su. However, the seatbelt slowly slipped loose. Due to inertia, Jin Su was wrapped up by the monster, and ultimately, he was completely consumed. He transformed into the form of a hellish messenger, vanishing from the public sight. This scene shocked everyone. The livestream chat and viewers fell silent instantly. The rioters in the square also lost their fighting spirit. Zhang Jinsu's prestige quickly collapsed. Li Su had too many questions in her heart. But after the chaos ended, 
The public would want an explanation. She had to pull herself together to clean up the mess. Lee Su ordered to convene the new Truth Council to quickly elect the next chairman. From the new divine mandate to Zheng Jinsu's sins, they needed to organize a statement to present to the public. Secondly, they needed to eliminate Arrowhead, as per their original plan, and frame new truth and Sutu as opposing forces, to get things back on track. On the other side, lawyer Min brought Zhang Su to the junkyard. Someone would come to take her to see her child soon. Dennis noticed that even at this moment, lawyer Min still wouldn't reveal the child's whereabouts, so he quietly drew his gun from behind. As lawyer Min glanced at a nearby car, she saw an elephant sticker on it. Lawyer Min instantly recalled Zhang Su's words. In a split second, she dodged the bullet and directly lunged at Dennis. As the two grappled, Lawyer Min was unfortunately shot. She pulled Zhang Su to hide in the shadows. Lawyer Min instructed her to run in the opposite direction. Then she deliberately made a noise to attract Dennis's attention, buying Zhang Su some time to escape. Dennis suddenly turned hostile because Su Tu's organization also could not resist the temptation of power. They were unwilling to let Zhang Su and her family leave. They wanted to use each other to become the next new truth, the most influential organization in Korea. And Dennis was even more radical. Now the public knew that Zhang Su had allied with Su Tu to prevent anyone from taking her away. Dennis planned to kill Zhang Su directly and spread the doctrine in her name. Dennis believed that, Lawyer Min, being a clear-headed person, was what led the world into chaos, as the two faced off in silence, Zhang Su accidentally made a sound, she exposed her location, in a critical moment, Lawyer Min rushed out to save her, Zhang Su was knocked unconscious, and fell into the van, Dennis struggled to break free from Lawyer Min, he activated a nearby junk car compactor, the van where Zhang Su was would soon be crushed, Lawyer Min delivered a powerful blow, that knocked Dennis down. She hurried to pick up the remote control. Unexpectedly, Dennis got back up and kicked her down. He snatched the remote and threw it far away. Immediately after, he grabbed Lawyer Min and kept attacking her, ruthlessly pressing on her wound. As the two fought to the death, Zhang Su finally regained consciousness and crawled out. Seeing this, Lawyer Min felt relieved. She took off her belt to tie up her bullet-wounded arm. Then she charged directly at Dennis. Lawyer Min didn't care about dying. How could she possibly lose to Dennis? In the end, Lawyer Min choked him unconscious. She turned off the machine to rescue Zhang Su. Lawyer Min cuffed Dennis to a tire. Then she took Zhang Su to meet the informant. The informant suddenly leaned close to Lawyer Min to tell her that the world was about to end. If there's something you want to do, you should do it quickly. After Zhang Su said this, she followed the informant and left. The car drove for quite a distance. Before Zhang Su recognized that, the informant was her son. The joy of their reunion turned into tears, streaming down her face. The death declaration found Lee Su. <laughs> Ghostly figures suddenly filled the square. They issued death sentences to the chaotic crowd, one by one. The whispers of demons echoed throughout the venue. Tens of thousands descended into a panic of death. Xiao He also ended her short life in the hospital room. On the other side, Lawyer Min ran back to the base. If the world was really going to end, she just wanted to leave the room with Ah Hyun, to leave the little girl with the most beautiful memories. At that moment, Lawyer Min still did not know that Ah Hyun was very likely the last hope in the world. This season's story ends here. In fact, the origin of the hellish messengers is not important. Various mysterious supernatural events are also not important. The essence of this show is still about humanity, about the struggle of ideologies, and the choices of each individual in chaos. There are many cults in Korea, and this brainwashing faith of pyramid schemes can lead to significant changes in people. Through the portrayal of the crazed cultists in the show, we can glimpse some truths. Although film and television works may exaggerate, the reality is that those brainwashed by cults and pyramid schemes lose themselves and end up with broken families. This season, although Yu Ayan was replaced, Kim Sung Chiol's charisma did not falter. Overall, it's still worth watching. Let's look forward to the story of the next season.